Hi, this is Danny Doyle, and I did a charity stream uh, as of recording yesterday. Um, it accidentally ended up being a 24-hour stream. It was uh, a lot of fun. The VODs are still up. I might edit it down into a single video, but that sounds like a lot of work, so probably not if we're being honest. But it was a sabotage stream. So, uh, a lot of things happened that caused units to be good or bad or worse or better than normal. Um, people got PRFs that they wouldn't normally, people got force deployed or force benched at times that they normally wouldn't, uh, some people got turned into game over conditions, some people died as a result of chat using um, the rip bozo command which was just end turn button whenever you want. Um, so it was a lot of fun. It was quite a lot of fun. Um, that said, where does everyone end up? I'm going to be tiering units based on their performance in the run. Uh, this is definitely including the fun factor because a lot of units were incredibly fun even if they were not especially good. Uh, this is definitely including like the favoritism they were forced to give. And this is definitely including like them getting benched when they shouldn't have. This is not a unit evaluation ranking tier list for vanilla play. This is specifically for how they performed in my playthrough, but it was a fun playthrough and I kind of want to talk about it. Um, Ike, God, my Ike was so fucking garbage. Um, I maintain that in FE9, Ike is just Roy without everything that makes Roy good. Uh, I talked about this quite a few times on stream, but basically Ike is sword locked and frail. Um, and he doesn't have the Rapier's 3x effectiveness, like, he has the Royal Sword, or Regal Sword, or whatever the fuck it's called, um, which is, has Rapier effectiveness, but, like, the real reason you use Roy is, like, Rapier effectiveness on Cavs is nice, but you use it for either, like, it's accurate damage, because accuracy is a premium in FE6, or it's effective damage, but it's 3x effective. Regal Sword's 2x effective, and accuracy is not at a premium. Um, eventually, he gets the Ragnell, and then he's good to go for two chapters. But god damn, he's not very good normally, and my Ike felt even worse. Um, I felt like maybe he was stat screwed, but apparently he wasn't. It's got the Oscar effect. Um, but he was getting two rounded in chapter 8 and chapter 9. Uh, and he just could never see the front lines, and as a result, he didn't get much experience. This is like the first time I've had an Ike that didn't hit 20 before promotion. Um, and I normally don't like, I don't favoritism Ike, right? I normally just get him to 20 because I don't think it's that hard to do. But I think as a result of me having to baby a bunch of other units, Ike just got less of the experience pie and he fell behind. Um, even when trained, I don't think he's good, but like maybe he's here when he's trained, but mine was probably here. Mine was probably just a very, very disappointing unit. Um, but we got to have, he got to have a boyfriend, so that was good. Holy shit, Boyd. Uh, <laughs> for a level 8 fighter, his performance, he like never missed. Despite constantly facing 50 and 60 hit rates. Um, like if I were evaluating him based on how he should have performed based on the favoritism and stuff, uh, he probably would be around Ike level. But this guy was so fucking reliable, he got the strength and speed that he needs to. Like, his first level being strength and speed is always a good sign for Boyd. Um, he never- he was never a long-term, and he did die. Um, but he got the strength and speed he needed, which was lucky. And then he just consistently hit 60s and 70s that he absolutely shouldn't have. Boyd is our boy. I think he deserves probably A tier, actually. He was so much fun to use. And then, like, we didn't have room for him because we had to use a bunch of other shitty units, and by the time I was able to bring it back, he's a level 8 fighter in chapter 17, so he got fucking killed. Uh, a lot of people died this run. Just, Ike using the bodies of his allies as a staircase to win back Crimea is the fucking victory story for the ages. Um, Boyd was a big part of that in the early game. Boyd is how he got through the fucking early game slog of chapter 8 and 9, and then... Uh, that, the 8 and 9 were the big ones. I guess he was, like, okay in 2. He feels a lot better than he is. He was really hype. I'm gonna put him in A. Probably belongs in B. Who cares? <laughs> so Titania was our early game. Uh, I hyper-focused using Titania while I could because I knew she was going to get immediately banned. And she did. She got perma-benched 
uh, as soon as she was able to. So I couldn't, I could use her for chapters one through seven when she was available, um, but I couldn't after that. Uh, what's extra funny is like, so she got perma benched uh, on chapter four, which means I could use her for five, six, and seven. And I used her for six and seven, but I didn't use her for five. I just had her meat shield for five. And then she was not allowed to be used once I had preps, which starts with chapter eight. Uh, cause Jono immediately sniped her and took her away. Um, th all that being said, despite only doing stuff in chapters one, two, three, four, six, and seven, she didn't get a single kill in five. She was the fifth best unit in the top five, uh, which was just so fucking funny. Um, I'm putting her below Boyd because she just didn't show up. Uh, actually, I'll put her above Boyd, because it was it was too funny that she got fucking fifth place. Big part of that was everyone was dead, but still. Um, it's just, it's good to be a paladin, and it's good to be Titania. Speaking of paladins, goddamn Oscar. I, anyone who watches the channel regularly knows I, I have a massive hate boner for Oscar. Uh, but I was actually somewhat happy when he got forced to. I was, like, low-key hoping that, like, my public hatred for one of the better units, like, a solid high B-tier, low A-tier unit, would lead to him being forced, because he couldn't get permabanned if he was forced. And that's what happened. And I was, like, happy that that happened, even though I, ha I hate Oscar. I was like, at least I have one good unit. Unfortunately, and perhaps this was, like, some amount of suffering from success, or the perception of success... But, like, Oscar could not get fed early on, and he could not get the bonus experience due to another incentive. So, he ended up just not being good. And this is the Oscar problem, right? Is he does need some babying and probably some bonus experience to perform on the same level as the other calves. So, he was just not getting kills, and as a result, not getting experience, and as a result, not doing well. Um... And so I was like, well, I can try to salvage him, and I early promoted him, and then that just made him god-awful as a combat unit. So he just ended up being a savior bot who was force deployed and, like, was just not good. <laughs> like, I, I'm tempted to even put him in F tier, but I know he contributed more than Ike. Savior was fine. Like, it got us out of some sticky situations that helped with Ashnard. Helped with the Ashnard kills to save your away Soren and Ileana so that they couldn't die to Ashnard because they were also lords and therefore game over conditions. But, yeah. Uh, Oscar was incredibly disappointing and I'm really happy and sad about that. Happy because I get to put Oscar low on a tier list, much lower than he belongs. But sad because, like, I thought I would be guaranteed a good unit. But it turns out the good units I was guaranteed come later in the tier list. <laughs> um, Lamal get wrecked, Riz. He fucking died in chapter 8 twice. <laughs> um, I guess Shannon theoretically was useful in the early game, but like, clearly I didn't need that if Titania is in the top 5, so Lamal get wrecked, you fucking racist. Also, Rolf died, so we couldn't even recruit him, but I also didn't want to. <laughs> Um, Gatri, 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 Gatri. Uh, basically the same thing as Shannon. He died in his rejoin map. Um, I did recruit him, but then he died, and I'm fine with that. That map was the only time that auto battle got used, and I think people saw that it was just... I thought it would be funny, because I did attempt an auto battle playthrough. Auto battle only playthrough that sort of fell apart in Oliver's Mansion. I thought it would be a funny one to sort of, like, try with trained people, because I was like, the big thing that made the auto battle playthrough fall apart in Oliver's Mansion is I just couldn't train anyone. Like, my only units were Ike, Oscar, Titania, and Jill. Um, and I had to BXP train all of them. And so then I'm just like low manning every map. And I thought maybe it would be like interesting with trained people, but it just, it was, I shouldn't have made it an incentive. It just ended up not being fun. I think everyone realized that the first time it was fired off. Um, yeah, I think everyone realized that the first team was fired up, which is unfortunate. Um, I'll, I'll sort of, if I do a charity stream next year, I'll sort of look into a different way of doing the auto battle incentive type deal. Uh, Soren! S is for Soren! He was number fucking one. Um, 
the Super Soren, incredibly fucking fun, incredibly fucking based, incredibly fucking great performance. Um, I maintain that he's a terrible unit in Path of Radiance under normal circumstances, but he was force-fed the bonus experience. I do think he's the worst target for this, other than maybe Ileana. Um, but he's force-fed the Chapter 8 bonus experience and suddenly became a level 18 in Chapter 8. And then just, like, his bulk was still not there. He was still dying in, like, four rounds of combat. But he was dodgy, so he would dodge tank. And then he got the Ike support eventually, which... People hammer on about the Ike support being, like, making people into dodge tanks. I He almost never got to utilize it because double earth means Ike's on the front lines and they shouldn't. Um, when I was able to utilize it for him, it did definitely improve his survivability. But, like, then Ike dies, and even then, like, in Clash, even in Clash, like, when they had the support with each other, Sorin was dying. Um, but I don't fucking care. He was so fun to use. He was doubling things with Siege Tomes. It was wacky fun. Um, I fully maintain that Tellius is the reason that Siege Tomes are now unable to double just inherently, because... Player units double with them in 9, and enemies double with them in 10, although it's intentional in 10. Like, they're mean about that with the strength stat in 10. Um, but player units will double with them in 9. Like, Soren and Khalil, base Khalil, in fact, doubles some units with Siege Tomes. Um, and Soren doubles with Siege Tomes when trained. He got rescue. He was just... He was everything I could have wanted in this playthrough. He was the fucking all-star. Um, and I was... I could not be happier. Uh... That said, there's a unit who's even worse than him, who I was even happier to use. I do think she performed slightly worse in this playthrough, but Mia was incredibly fun to use. Don't look at this guy's stats. She's the best Swordmaster in all of Tellius, in all of Fire Emblem. Move over Ryoma, move over Kagetsu, get fucking wrecked. Mia Gaming, FE9, fucking... This unit was... I feel like more than Soren, the story of the run was like, how the fuck is Mia doing all of this? She got tinked by multiple enemies as well, like a Levin Sword, a Javelin, I think an Iron Axe at one point. She was absurdly dodgy, uh, which, you know, dodge tanking, not reliable, everything that I said about Soren applies to her, but it doesn't matter. It was fun. She performed super well. I don't think she ever died. She was a game over condition, but I don't think she ever actually died. Maybe in chapter eight? But, like, she was unironically, even before Super Trained, like, the best damage outputter in, like, Chapter 11 and 12 and 13. It was absurd. It was so fucking unreal. Um, I had so much fun with this unit. Like, and then obviously we did the foot lore live on stream. We did the fucking foot lore live on stream, which I guess brings us along to Ileana, who was just Sorin but worse. But, like, Soren was still incredibly fun, having another one who's slightly worse, because she didn't get the robe, I think was the big thing. Soren had a robe. And then, like, their HP difference ended up being, I think, about six total, which is less than the robe gives. So I really do think his extra bulk was the robe. And then, like, obviously the last two chapters with the Ike support is very nice, but, like, the robe made a big difference. Um, I gave her Adept, just, I turned her into quite literally Soren, but again, um, which was you know certainly a choice uh and and i think a good one and they both had staves and they both ended up getting rescue by the end although i didn't use rescue on ilion i only used it on soren um but still physics staff uh like super sage number two somehow just it just works you know nike it just works lamau um you know what doesn't work though <laughs> mist she got fucking wrecked by the Chapter 11 Wyverns because somebody redeemed the Rip Bozo so that I had to end my turn while she was in range of the Wyverns. Um, and that ended up causing a, neat, a sticky situation because we had to get uh, everyone out of Jill's range before she would suicide because Jill was actually mandatory to recruit because someone had paid for her to be uh, deployed in a map. Or paid for a personal, I think. So she was like a mandatory recruit. And also, I love Jill and I wanted her. Um... So, Mist's death fucking... It led to a bad situation, too, where the Wyverns were, like, in a spot we had to canto away, and it was annoying. Um, 
And I kind of want to penalize her for that because it's my tier list and I can do it. She was a healer for one chapter though. Uh, like exactly one chapter. She was a healer in chapter 9 and then I stealth 10. Somehow I fucking stealth 10. And then she was a dead. <laughs> uh, in 11. Which is funny. Uh, Rolf, you go... Here. Also, you go here. Yeah. Rolf died... Marsha died after getting benched. We used them both to- we sacrificed them both to save Leth's life. Um, speaking of Leth's life, like, Leth was actually a decent combat unit for a significant portion of the time that we had no decent combat units because we were using these three scrubs before training them. Um, I really, really liked Leth this run. I deployed her way longer than I ever have. Uh, I still only got the B support with Jill, unfortunately, or the C support with Jill, unfortunately, but I deployed her much longer than I ever have, like, not, not much longer than I ever have, like, I've used her in full playthroughs before, but much longer than I usually do, because I do not think that she's a unit who, like, justifies a deployment slot in, in maps that, beyond, like, 16, 15, probably is the last time you use her, the desert, um, but she was good, she was good, and she was fun, and... Uh, she helped these people rise to greatness, and we thank her for that. Uh, shove, smite, shove and smite, shove and smite, like, fucking, let's just rank them both together, because these were the smite bros. I know that, like, Mordecai is significantly better because of availability, availability of smite, and also, like, you give them the statue frags. They both make equal use of the statue frags, but you get the statue frags and you get smite before Mariam and the second smite, so, like... Mordecai basically, like, there's no reason not to do it with Mordecai. Morium's just, like, worse at it. Um, but these were the Smite Bros. Like, they did, they definitely did more combat than they do in the average playthrough. Um, again, just because, like, all of my good units, Lamau, what good units. But they were the Smite Bros, and Soren was the prime Smite target. It did a lot of Soren smiting. Um, Volk, actually, <laughs> so I actually somehow fucking stealthed the prison map, despite the fact that there was an incentive to end turn that at any point someone could use to game over me like literally if i lost stealth it was just fucking ggs because all the lords are huddled up in the entry room hiding um to not die but somehow i did it and i think as a result of that volk is just automatically b tier i don't like him i don't think thieves are good a good place to be in Tellius, but the memory of, so of like, tensely, constantly thinking someone's gonna rip Bozo, and if they do, it's Jover for me. I can no longer stealth, because then every time I try to stealth, someone will rip Bozo. Like, once the can is opened and everyone knows they can do it, then I'll never be able to stealth. Um, so thankfully, that didn't happen. I love Kieran, and then he died. Um, Kieran just, like, is a good unit. He's the best cavalier in the game. Best Paladin in the game. Um, by, I would say by a significant margin. Uh, but then he died. And also, I think he got banned from one map. Or something. Or maybe I just, like, didn't use him as much as I usually do. I'll put him in A anyway. Out of, like, Kieran favoritism. Red Cap Supremacy. Woot woot. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I don't really have much to say about his performance. I think he got banned from... The uh, Astrid map, I want to say. Yeah, that was the one he was banned from, the Astrid map. Um, and that hurt him a lot because that was a tough map. That was the auto battle one. <laughs> um, Nephany, I somebody paid me to make a forge where I lowered the might as much as possible. And she was dealing zero to fucking everything in Blood Runs Red. And then she died in the auto battle map. And it was funny. The funny. Brom! <laughs> um... We had, we had some fun times with Braum, but I'm struggling to remember many of them. Other than the fact that he was constantly getting sacrificed, but then not dying, like living at 1 HP somehow. That happened like 4 or 5 times, so I promoted him for Endgame and sacrificed him on Endgame as a result of that. But then it became clear I needed someone tougher than him to be at Endgame sacrifice, so he got to survive again! <laughs> Braum is fucking invincible. Um, Zark murdered a bunch of Lagoos. He got forced to kill a bunch of crows with the Lagoo Slayer by money, um, which was quite amusing. And then he got retired immediately afterwards after getting all of that Lagoos experience, which was doubly quite amusing. Um, 
Unfortunately, like, that means that he was available for two chapters and, like, not particularly good in either of them. So he ends up in Oscar tier. <laughs> like, worse than... Worse than Ike, but not worse than Miss. Uh, yeah. Soth was forced in the fucking Ravens chapter. Uh, so I had to keep him alive, too. Which was so fucking tragic. So fucking tragic for him to be... Um, Jill, 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 Jill. Uh, I used her quite a lot and then she got retired, but I loved using her. Like, I feel like she just had the Kieran experience. She also missed the Astrid map, which also sucked for the auto battle. Like, missing those two units while trying to auto battle, I think made it even more miserable than it normally would be. But it still probably was not a great incentive. It just doesn't mix well with squishy units being lords. And I should have known that squishy units would be lords because some of the worst units are squishy. Um... She basically just was Kieran, but flying, and flight is fucking based in Tellius, so that. Um, Astrid probably deserves to be here. Probably deserves actually, like, here-ish. She was, like, a good contributor, and then she died, and, like, she died in 17, and I just didn't want to reset. A lot of people died in 17, and I just didn't want to reset. Um, or maybe it was 16. There was, like, a couple of massacres in a row that I just didn't want to reset. Um, but she was, a, she was a decent contributor for a little bit, and then she died. Um, notably, she got, like, better than Ike and Oscar within one chapter and no bonus experience, which was hilarious. She was, like, level 8 and had better stats than both of them, proving that my hate boner for Oscar is so justified uh, we killed Makalov, but we couldn't kill him with Astrid, which was tragic. Uh, but we killed him, and that's what matters. I think maybe Oscar killed him? Or Jill? I don't remember. Someone on that left side of the map. Uh, we didn't get Vantage for Soren, which was tragic. Oh, I think Soren killed Makalov. So I guess that was his punishment, is not getting Vantage. Um, Tormod's balls dropping was a very comedy moment, and then he died. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, there was an incentive to make forges and there was also an incentive to drop items and so uh stagurna made a forge called balls and put it on tormod and then had his balls drop and it was very comedy and then he died the next map because he had no balls um which was so tragic for him but it was very funny uh stefan probably goes up here i got so much use out of this unit and i really don't care for him like i think that he's overrated by a significant margin just because his stats are fucking bonkers but Swordmaster is a bad class, and it keeps him in check, and it keeps him in check more than some people want to admit. Like, I think Stefan has some fans that forget Path of Radiance is the horse game. Um, and also, it's the axe game, and he gets neither of those. Like, he has no Kanto, no high movement, no access to good weapons. He's not even, like, given lances as a, as a prize, like a, an exchange prize. But in a playthrough where, like, I think he joined around the time that Jill got benched and also Kieran and Astra died. Like, all of my good units were just no longer available. He was just, like, a better version of Mia. Uh, but less fun to use because, like, he is just given all that stuff at base. And Mia, we had that fun zero to hero stuff. Uh, Devdon surprisingly fucking worth. Like, Devdon put in an absurd amount of work. Uh, with basically no, like, fav reasonable favoritism for him either. Like, he was just doing stuff, and it was just very nice. Like, it was always very nice stuff that he did. Um, and I don't really have that much to say. Like, he was just another soldier in the army, no pun intended, because that's his class line, his soldier. But he was just, like, another soldier in the army. But in an army where everyone was dying, the fact that he lived until endgame and then died and, like, was doing damage, too. I don't know why. Like, this unit just felt low-key good. And it was hard to dis... Like, I don't know why. Um, Tanith was an easy S tier. Probably, other than Soren, the best performer in the run. Um... She did the things that Tanith normally does. Like, she's still a phenomenal unit. She probably belongs in A tier in a vanilla playthrough. Um, she is just a pre promoted flyer you get who's really, really good. Anyone who's played Path of Radiance knows she's a top tier unit. Reinforces really strong as well and also fun. But the most fun thing about Tanith was she survived Endgame despite being a sacrificial bait somehow. 
um, and kept those paladins busy the entire time. It was so wild. Um, and that just sticks out in my memory so much uh, that in the final attempt in Endgame, she just, like, kept dodging when she had no fucking right to. And, like, she also broke the Flame Lance and the Wind Sword and the Ruin Sword on, like, just being used throughout the playthrough the way that you normally use Tanith. I'm surprised she didn't get retired. Um, I'm really surprised she didn't get retired, but I'm even more surprised that Rayson didn't get retired. Uh, he can't go above Mia because I love Mia, but he goes above Tanith because, like, just the, the fact that I got a dancer this entire time and he was never retired was bonkers to me. Uh, like, just bonkers but there we go that's what that's what happened that's how it worked that's how it worked i got a dancer he's a good dancer too because he can transform and do four way and he has flight and no canto in this game but still very very good um <laughs> uh yeah rip bozo rip bozo they were like good filler for a little bit but i don't really have any memories of them um like they definitely performed well enough to be in like the dev don uh uh stefan tier i fucking forgot his name but like i just don't remember anything about them um like the they're just the birds they're just the birds i couldn't even fucking recruit nasala because racing was banned for the nasala chapter which is funny um so like they didn't even have that going for them yeah just just birds just birds uh i said recruit nasala i meant like you talk to him and get him to leave he, you you don't recruit that unit at that point of the game what is this radiant dawn nyla no no um but yeah, he was good. They were not. Um, I mean, Khalil's utility, like, the reason I think Khalil is the best sage is you don't have to bother training the bad ones. Uh, she paled in comparison to them. But she did some meteor stuff in Endgame. And that was the only time she got deployed. And at base, she was doubling generals with fucking sea stones. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous, and then she died. But, like, that left more of an impression to me than anything Cormod did, other than the balls. Tormod's balls dropping was a little, was a little juvenile, but very funny. Um, but yeah, base level Khalil doubling with Siege Tomes. I mean, it was generals, it's not hard to double them, but Siege Tomes are heavy as shit. Like, holy macaroni. Um, that was helpful, Chip. That was helpful, Chip, and then she died, and, like, she got invalidated by the exist- Like, even if, like, Ileana didn't exist, and it was just Super Soren, I feel like I probably wouldn't want a third Sage, or a second Sage, but, like, yeah, she just got invalidated by our Super Sages. Like, having two of them, that there was no reason. Tyronio! Oh my goodness. I think is actually, like, probably here. Probably here. Not- a lord probably actually i liked him more than iliana uh i used him less but like <laughs> he was one of the many during my unhinged clash clear where everyone was dying and i was just like sacrifice you sacrifice you he was a sacrifice who just would not die and then i was just like toronio bullfighter gaming he would never betray me he's so fucking good i love this unit i love this unit i'm putting him in s tier they love this fucking man um oh my god i want to use him on my next uh maniac mode playthrough now after his brilliant performance on clash like resolve 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 he walled end game he was really good for clash like those maps stick out in my mind because those were the draining and exhausting ones i don't care that he wasn't used or available for other ones like God damn fucking... He, the man left an impression in so few chapters of availability that you have to fucking hand it to him. I'm predisposed to like Bullfighter, but he left a goddamn impression this time around. Uh, Ranulf just sort of feels like them. Like, just sort of was... He did stuff, but nothing super memorable. Like, and then he died. He was one of the many Clash sacrifices... Rip Bozo, Jill got retired before she could recruit Har. She got retired after her dad died, which was very sad. Tragic, tragic. Um, Bastion here. Like, just... These are the units who just sort of, like, didn't really leave much of an impression. Bastion, Lucia, and Joffrey were all, like, clash sacrifices. Um, and probably, like, left 
in this order in terms of like how much I care about them. Largo was a clash sacrifice as well, but he did some stuff in the mountain map, which was nice and funny. Um, he's sort of like the axe version of Stefan, who comes much, 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 much later. And that, like, hit. And it, I don't even know if that's true, because, like, his defense is trash. So, like, his stats aren't even, like, overkill combat. But also, being an infantry unit really holds him back. At least he gets axes, though. Uh. There. Like. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say about you. You didn't do anything. You didn't get recruited. Okay, this is uneven, so you go there. Um, actually, you probably go there, because you did stuff on your rejoin map. Um, and, uh, just another one that just sort of blends in with all these people. Like, I used her a little on Twisted Tower and Repatriation, but, like, she's just a, a, a unit that existed, which is kind of what this ended up being. Just units that exist. Uh, she, her bulk actually was very good for repatriation. But there's one map. And like, yes, recency bias. It's like what I remember. Because I just wanted the stream to be over at that point. But eh. And then Gifka showed up. And these two didn't. Gifka didn't do anything though. Okay, Shannon, you get to move up with your boyfriend. There we go. I thought they were dating in my first playthrough, but I also thought Shannon was a girl because I was like hetero pilled and 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 yeah, I thought they were like a couple, and I didn't realize Shannon was a boy. <laughs> um, but now I'll ship them as a gay couple, and so I'm redeeming myself for my hetero pilled sins. This is the tier list. This is definitively how these characters rank in Path of Radiance, by the way. If anyone says otherwise, they're fucking wrong.